The study of personality is crucial for ensuring effective job performance. It can improve hiring, transfer and promotion decisions. Personality traits predetermine the parameters for people's behavior and provide us with a paradigm for predicting behavior. The first section in this chapter gives the meaning of personality, discusses the self-concept and elaborates upon the individual situation interaction. The second section discusses the development of personality while referring to few significant contributions in this area such as the theory of adult stages of life and immaturity to maturity continuum. The third section focuses on the key determinants of personality encompassing the biological contribution, culture and familial contribution. It also explores the process of socialization and its importance and subsequently highlights the influencing situational factors. Personality has been defined from different perspectives. At times there is a tendency to define personality from the perspective of social success as a good person or a popular person. There may also be an attempt to describe personality by one predominant trait such as a strong person. But let us attempt a definition. The word personality can be traced back to Latin words persona which means to speak through. This meaning is important because it is relevant to the contemporary analysis of personality. In common parlance the word refers to the role that a person is playing in public. On the other hand the academic definition carefully concerns itself with the person rather than the role. Personality would essentially mean how people affect others and, and how they understand and view themselves and also their pattern of inner and outer measurable traits and the person situation interaction. External appearance and behavior plays a major role in impacting other people. What are the factors that determine personality? This is a difficult question to answer. There are several cognitive and psychological processes plus several other variables which contribute to personality. We will club these in broad categories such as the biological, cultural and familial. Beginning with the biological contribution, they can be divided into different approaches such as heredity, managerial thinking, biofeedback and physical characteristic. Heredity is very pronounced and yet undecided area of understanding. Through research it has been found that both physical as well as psychological characteristics can be transmitted at birth. Genetic engineering is the next revolution in the wings. The underlying belief is that certain factors can be influenced by heredity and one in which there can be a major influence is intelligence. Some behavioral scientists have concluded based on research that managers think differently from lay people. Researchers have shown that senior managers have a greater capacity for looking at things differently. They also have a stronger capacity for pulling things together and they also are flexible. Split brain psychology though closely related to managerial thinking is less researched. This is a fad which has been brought to management by Henry Minsberg who advocated that whether a person will be a planner or a manager will be decided by the fact that which particular hemisphere of his brain is more developed. Today some training programs are based on split brain psychology. Biofeedback is the new emerging influence on personality. Until recently both psychologists and physiologists believe that certain biological functions such as brain wave pattern, gastric secretions and fluctuations in blood pressure and skin temperatures were beyond conscious control. But now it is believed that these involuntary functions can be controlled with the help of biofeedback. Physical characteristics and rate of maturing is another biological approach which analyzes the effects of physical characteristics and rate of maturing. A person's physical appearance is biologically predetermined. This will influence the person's impact on others and, and in turn this will affect the self-concept of the person. Conventionally it is believed that cultural factors have a strong influence on one's personality than biological factors. 
The learning process plays an important role, but at times the cognitive or the reinforcement process is not acknowledged. In personality development, the content is as important as the process. Culture is one of the important concepts in understanding and analyzing the concept of learning because what a person learns has a content. It largely helps in predetermining attributes such as independence, aggression, competition and cooperation. Despite the importance of culture, we cannot draw linear relationships between personality and a given culture. Again, in a complex society such as we have several subcultures within a culture. Again, there would be a value difference among socio-economic classes, ages and geographic regions. It may therefore not be possible to make broad generalization. But it may therefore not be possible to make broad generalizations. But the fact remains, the culture affects personality. James Baglin had conducted a research study where he tracked the impact of the parents on personalities of very successful executives. The 20 case study revealed that negative identification was a major motivating force for the son throughout his life. Another important area is birth order data. Siblings also contribute to the personality. The advocates of birth order data believe that it is possible to describe major personality attributes of a person solely on the basis of position in the family constellation. Besides biological, cultural and familial factors, the influence of other relevant persons, groups and especially organizations also greatly influence an individual's personality. This is termed as the socialization process. What specific steps would you take for a successful organizational socialization? To begin with, just ensure to provide a challenging first job to the new employee. Give relevant training to every employee. Provide timely and consistent feedback to the employee. Select a good first supervisor to take charge of socialization. Design a relaxed orientation program for the new employees and place your new recruits in a work group with obviously high morale. There are several stage theory of personality development. A majority of them deal with psychological development rather than personality development. Among quite a few psychologists, there is a consensus that there are no identifiable stage in the development of personality. On the other hand, there is an opposing view which supports the stages in personality development. The theories that are particularly relevant to the understanding of organizational behavior are the theories provided by Levinson, Hall and Argyris. Let us look at the major contribution in this area. Daniel Levinson's work has contributed in great measure and has received a lot of attention. He first designed an age-based stage theory, unlike others that had devised event-based. His belief was that life structure evolves through a relatively orderly sequence throughout the adult year. His belief was that life structure evolves through a relatively orderly sequence throughout the adult years. He believed that there are no variability. Giving a maximum of two or three years in four identifiable stable periods, namely entering into the adult world, which spans from 22 to 28. Settling down, spanning from ages 33 to 40. Entering middle adulthood, spanning from ages 45 to 50. And culmination of middle adulthood, that spans from ages 55 to 60. He also identified four transactional periods, namely age 30 transition between age 28 to 33. Midlife transition between ages 40 to 45, age 50 transition between ages 50 to 55 and late adulthood transition that ranges between ages 60 to 65. Chris Argyris has identified the specific dimensions of the human personality as it develops. Argyris, as opposed to the stage theory, propounds that instead of going through a definite stage, the human personality evolves along the continuum from immaturity as an infant to maturity as an adult. However, 
He also suggests that at any given age, people may have their own degree of development, plotted as per the seven dimensions given in the table shown here. There are specific personality traits which have been found to be powerful predictions of behavior in an organization. Let's take locus of control. Some people believe that they are masters of their fate, while others think of themselves as helpless pawns in the hand of fate. The first ones are termed as internals, whereas the second type are termed as externals. The locus of control is nothing but the person's perception of the source of his or her fate. Overall evidences indicate that internals perform better on the job, but of course, with some differences in job being taken into account. Let's move over to Machiavellism, which as a word is derived from Niccolo Machiavelli, who wrote on how to gain and use power. One who is high in Machiavellianism is pragmatic, maintains emotional distance, and believes that ends justify the means. They believe that if it works, then simply use it. Those who are high max try manipulating more, winning more, persuade others and are themselves less persuaded. Individuals invariably differ in the degree to which they like or dislike themselves. This trait is called self-esteem. The research on self-esteem offers interesting insights. It is directly related to the expectation of success. Those with high self-esteem believe that they possess the ability to succeed at work. Individuals with high self-esteem will take more risks in job selection and are more likely to choose unconventional jobs than people with low self-esteem. It is found that those with low self-esteem are more susceptible to external influence than those with high self-esteem. Similarly, those with high self-esteem have been found to be more successful with their jobs than those with low self-esteem. Now let us discuss a little about personality and cultural impact. Obviously there are no personality types for a given country and yet a country's culture impacts the personality of a person. There's enough evidence that culture differs in terms of people's relationships to their environment. For instance in North American culture people believe that they can dominate their environment. Whereas people in the Middle Eastern countries believe that everything is predestined. So here we can expect a large number of internals among the workforce in the US and a large number of externals in the workforce of Saudi Arabia. This simply implies that culture has a subtle influence on the personality of people and it is one of the significant influence in the development of personality.